Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to to you, you, O Christ. Christ. The other day, I saw a list of phobias, you know, experiences that people fear. And there at the top of the list, which is the exact same as the last time I saw this list, is the fear that people fear the most, public speaking. As for me, I'm afraid of wasps. Sphexophobia, they call it. Also, I'm a little afraid of dark places, and I'm definitely afraid of messing up on the first tee of a golf course. You know, the one that's right in front of the clubhouse where everyone can see? But I don't know what they call those kind of phobias. But the majority of people fear what I do for a living. They would rather be kicked out of an airplane with a parachute strapped to their back or go to the edge of a cliff and put their toes over the edge of the cliff or come face to face with a python or look a spider right in the eye. Anything to avoid standing up in front of a group of people and giving a speech. Maybe it's because I speak in front of people for a living, but I am always surprised in the church when someone asks or says to me that they will be willing to do anything to help the church, anything but speak in public. A person was recently telling me that she is having nightmares about speaking in public that she wakes up in the middle of the night, she's drenched in sweat, and she has a fear that the teacher has called her to come up in front of the classroom and recite a poem or do a reading or give some kind of a speech. And this woman is in her 50s. That fear continues. And yet... There is something even more that really bothers people about getting up in front of others. Because even people who have no fear of giving a speech at times become terrified when asked to do so. I mean, we have many wonderful people in our congregation who are more than willing to be a part of our worship services and get up in front of people and read Bible readings during the worship services. But yet, I would imagine that if I asked these people that next week you're going to give a five-minute presentation about your faith or about something that is heavy on your heart, then I would guess I wouldn't have as many takers. It's especially hard for us to get up in front of people when we're asked to talk about our faith or speak from our heart. 
This is what Jesus asks his 12 disciples to do in today's gospel reading from Matthew 16. At first, Jesus asks his disciples a general type of question. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples don't seem to have much of a problem in answering that question. Immediately, they all start shouting out answers. Some say that you are John the Baptist. A lot of people say that you might be one of the prophets who's come back from the dead. And on and on come the answers. They are all like children when the teacher in the classroom asks, tell me about the Revolutionary War. All the hands go up. But then Jesus gets personal. Jesus then asks them to share from their heart, to share their statement of faith. But who do you say that I am? And the hands go down. And we can just imagine the disciples looking to the ground and diddling with their feet in the sand and becoming silent. We can just imagine Jesus saying something to the effect, well, well, now speak up, now speak up. I don't care what nine out of ten average Americans think. I want to hear what you think about me. Here we're not just talking about the truth. We're talking about the truth for you. And that's different. You are watching and listening to this live stream. And during today's worship, you're going to be saying all kinds of things about Jesus. But say sometime in the next week someone comes up to you and asks you, you go to church, don't you? Do you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? What do you believe? Hmm. That is different. On what are you willing to bet your life? What commit commitment, which attachment will determine how you live and move and have your being? What do you say? Speak up now. Can't hear you. What do you say in this time of COVID? What do you say in this time of struggle for racial equality? What do you say in trying to get through this economic crisis? What do you say as you are trying to stay hopeful amid such a toxic political culture? A loving father once said to me, after the death, the tragic death of his beloved daughter, I have never thought much about the resurrection before. Never needed to until now. Now everything hinges on what I believe is going to happen at the end. What you say matters. Yup. Who cares what nine out of ten average Americans think? What do you believe? It was silent for those 12 disciples of Jesus until only one disciple, only Peter, speaks up and says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus' response is interesting. Notice that Jesus does not agree with Peter. Jesus does not tell Peter that he's right or that he's correct. But Jesus responds by basically saying to Peter, follow me. Because our faith in Jesus is not just about speaking up for Jesus in our lives, but it's also about living out Jesus in our lives. Because now Jesus gives Peter an assignment that on him he will build his church. So how do we do this in our lives? 
How do we speak up in this time and live out who Jesus is in our lives? I mean, this seems like such a huge, daunting task for us. How do we do that? As we look to our gospel reading for today, we see that what enabled Peter to finally speak up about Jesus and follow him wasn't actually anything of his own doing. It wasn't by his own accomplishment that he was able to say, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Because right after Peter said this, Jesus says to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but your Father in heaven. Revelation, as it turns out, comes from God and only comes from God and always. God is always helping you and I to speak up and live out our faith in our lives. Because the faith we seek, the confidence we long for, the courage we hope to find and share, these are gifts from God. And God loves to give you and me such gifts. In the midst of all that challenges us, in the midst of our weariness and stress that we are feeling, in the midst of being frustrated and discouraged over how long it's been since we've been able to be together in person, in the midst of continuing to wonder how we will get through this time and how we will continue to keep the faith, in the midst of all of this, God, the creator of the heaven and earth, the one who brings life from death and creates something out of nothing, this God is still at work. God is still at work in you, sustaining your faith, creating hope, and stirring in you and me courage to do acts of service and generosity. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven... God is still at work, my friends. God is at work, and more than that, God shows up in your life and mine and creates ways in which we have faith and hope and courage and love during challenge and unprecedented times. In the notes and phone calls that we make that takes the place of hospital visits, in the communal kindness and the responsibility to wear masks in public, in the many donation drives that have taken place, in the imperfect but vital work for greater racial equity and justice in which we are engaged, in the willingness to sacrifice and forego things like in-person worship that typically stains us, doing so out of a love for our neighbor. God is at work, sustaining you in faith, equipping you to meet the needs of your neighbor, renewing in you hope and courage, helping you to overcome your fear and speak up, and working through you for the sake of the world that God loves so much. You bet, God is still at work. May we pray. Almighty God, you ask us what we think of you. And we can have all kinds of responses. But Lord, you ask us to speak up. And not only to speak out, up, but live out our faith in our lives as indeed you follow up with follow me. And Lord, this seems like a daunting task, but yet it's because of you. It's because of your gifts that you give to us. You sustain our faith. You give us courage and hope and strength to continue on, to do your work, to speak up. And we thank you for that gift. We pray that you help us to realize this always and to continue indeed to speak up and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.